Good afternoon. I hope you had a good lunch, right? Yeah. So it's um, a great pleasure for me to introduce the next speaker. He is a professor at the University of North Texas, Professor Neil Foote. He's a principal lecturer there, and he's also co-director of the Mayborn Literary Nonfiction Conference. He's going to tell you a great deal more about both the Young Spurs writing contest and the conference. And Mr. Chauncey Lindley, Lindner sorry, um, had two students there last year who were winners and have had essays published in the Dallas Morning News. So we hope you can join your classmates in doing this. He was originally from New York City. He's an award-winning journalist with over 35 years in the field. His first uh, journalist assignment was for the Miami Herald. And he likes to say these were his Miami Vice days. Um, he then went to the Washington Post and we're very fortunate he's now in Texas, so let's give him a big round of applause. Thank you. How's everybody? I'm supposed to say howdy, right? Howdy. Right, I'm from Brooklyn, so it's yo, okay? <laughs> All right. My name is Neil Foote. I'm a principal lecturer at the Mayborn School of Journalism in Denton, Texas. Welcome. I'm so glad to see you guys here. It's really an honor to be part of this program. For eight years, we have been working with the George Bush uh, Presidential Library and Museum. Shirley Hamm and, and George Getchow, who you'll hear from a few minutes, my colleague at the Mayborn, were really the brainchild folks who, who kind of founded this idea of creating a contest for young folks like you to participate in a national contest and write about subjects that are near and dear to your heart in many different ways. The wonderful thing is, is that each year, you know, we, this is a thousand, but I understand, according, based on the, this year's numbers, by the end of tomorrow, we'll have some 1,500 students who will have come through this auditorium to hear this, these presentations of the past couple days. So you all are part of a wonderful legacy that we've started here with the university. Uh, and as Shirley mentioned, uh, and I'll go back here a second, uh, and I'll point these, these two folks out. These are two students from A&M Consolidated High School, Alexis Kuppersmith uh, and, and Shiva, who both were award winners last year to come and, and, come and participate in the contest and become winners and come up to uh, the Mayborn School uh, and the contest last year. Let me show you a little video to give you a little feel about what this contest is all about, what this contest and the conference is all about. Enjoy that. How are the sponsors along the way? So what, what's this contest all about? Young Spurs, appropriately named uh, with this Texas theme, but it's all about in, in, really inciting curiosity. You all live in a world where there's so much going on so quickly that you are connected to this world 24-7 with your devices. Each and every one of you have a computer in your pockets 
called a, so, a mobile phone that allows you to connect with each other and around the world instantly. What we want to do is develop and promote this sense of storytelling that you have all within you. You all are storytellers. You all are publishers. The sheer fact that you have a mobile device in your hands that you publish content on Facebook and Snapchat and texting and, and Instagram, you are publishers in your own right which has changed the dynamic of the world in which we live in. And our hope with this, this, through this contest is to really channel those creative activities into the form of an essay that potentially will allow you to show off your writing skills, practice writing, work with your advisors and teachers who have been great supporters of this program. And whether you become a journalist a lot or not, of course, I want you to become a journalist because that's what my, my avocation is and what I've done for the last 35 years. I've always loved to write. Whatever you do, you're going to have to write. Whatever you do, you're going to have to communicate. And whether that's writing emails or reports or articles or essays or blog posts, you're going to have some way or some, you're going to use some of these same skills each and every way along the way. Scenes from over the years of folks like you sitting in rooms like this in Grapevine, Texas. The opportunity here is to really strengthen what I tr truly believe and I'm very passionate about uh, is, is the role that you can play as journalists and storytellers. Like I said, you may not become journalists, but the importance of storytelling and being really good storytellers is absolutely important. We've had a lot of discussion in the last few months, right, about alternative facts. Right? The key role that journalists plays is making sure that we help all of our readers, you, me, understand the difference between alternative facts and facts, that we create a window of opportunity here that really strengthens a core tenet of our democracy, the First Amendment, which is tied to all of our values of freedom of the press and religion and the right to assemble, the ability to provide a voice to the voiceless. And the prompt that you'll see for this year's conference about ranching heritage in Texas goes to this opportunity of looking at stories within your own lives, within your own community, whether it's your parents, your grandparents, friends, who are seeing the communities in which they live change around them. And this is an opportunity to do that. No less, really, accountability, right? Because everyone needs to be held accountable. Everyone needs to be asked why they do what they do, why they say what they say, and how they say what they say will impact each and every one of us. That's what journalists do. That's what storytellers do. That's your opportunity to do this through this contest and lay the groundwork, perhaps, for other projects that you'll do along the way. It won't be the last essay you'll write. You're going to write plenty of essays in high school, in college, and throughout life. Our role has changed as journalists, right? Back in my day, we published it, uh, I wrote a story, it ran in the newspaper, and we dropped it on your doorstep. Now, because you have these devices in your hand, you can publish everything I say right now and instantly share it with the world. You could post it on your Twitter feed and share it in this room. If there are 250 people in the room and each of you have 1,000 followers, suddenly 25,000 people see it, your 1,000 followers and friends see it, and suddenly in five minutes, tens of thousands of people could hear what I'm saying. That's pretty unbelievable, right? So our role as journalists and storytellers is going out and trying to organize this content. This project, this Young Spurs Essays Contest, is an opportunity for you to learn some of those skills and apply some of those skills to help organize this contest in a wonderful story. Jack Fuller talks about this, about the importance of journalism in our, he, he puts it in the context of our uh, need for information so that they need to be sovereign. This notion of sovereignty is about our ability to be free and to have good information, accurate information, fairly fair information that we can make decisions about the world in which we live. Whether it's taxes, whether it's roads, whether it's new schools, whether it's new housing, these are all decisions that we make within our lives, that, that politicians make, that we have to understand as citizens in this country. Bill Kovach and Tom Rosenstiel in their book, The Elements 
of style, <laughs> elements of journalism, actually is a reflection of them traveling around the country for over a year, talking to folks like you, talking to families and farmers and business people and learning what do they think about the role of journalism in our world today. And this sense of journalistic truth goes at the core value of why we do what we do as journalists, why I'm teaching journalism today, and why I'm standing before you today to encourage you to kind of take on this writing project as an opportunity to, to, to create a voice for yourself and others. Because if you don't tell your story, if you don't tell the story of others, who will tell that story? And if you leave it up to others to tell that story, is that the story you want them to read? It's your opportunity then to kind of capture that, that, uh, uh, that story. So the, the prompt this year, Texas is ranching heritage, and George Getchow in a few minutes is going to tell you some great information about the research he's done for the book that he's writing about this wonderful culture and history in this state, and really reflective of really some of the core values in this country. Uh, it's an opportunity to, be, to explore and be curious. You know, some of you say, well, I don't write, I don't do this, I hate this. Well, let me just lay out a couple things around you. you know, what are the stories uh, that are out there? What can you write about? As I said, each and every one of you in a conversation today that if you go home tonight and say, hey, this guy was talking about ranching and writing essays about ranching, what do you know about that? I would venture to say that your parents, your grandparents, your neighbors have a story to tell. A story that you could potentially use for this project. Uh, you've read, you certainly have been doing reading and history about it. There's certainly blogs that address this issue. Uh, you, know, you can, yes, use good old Google, uh, verifying that information, working with your librarians. Yes, either your school library or your local libraries are still valuable resources. Much of the research that George has done, other than interviewing tons of people for his project, end up being uh, uh, documents that he's found in libraries. This library here is a tremendous resource. Scholars from around the world come and use this library to find information. So don't think libraries still don't, don't play a role for us. Using social media. We could set up a hashtag right now, right? Hashtag Ranch Life post a question and say, how has your world changed in the last five years based on development? And see what responses you get. One of the biggest stories potentially affecting your community is this high-speed rail that's, that's planned from Dallas to Houston. Growth and development on one side, threats to tradition and values of farming on another. You could story map it, right? You're going to hear a little bit more about the King Ranch in a second, right? We could look at how it impacts roads, cattle, the value of land, how it changes lifestyles, right? We can talk about what type of development coming, how it will increase and change the value of land uh, and therefore your taxes, right? Uh, we'll find resources, we'll interview them. You know, one of the other great things that you can do with this project, which I, I regret, again, I, I tell you, I grew up in New York. I had a great aunt who grew up in Harlem during the 30s and 40s. She had some wonderful stories. I, like you, at your age, was too restless. I wish I had taken a tape recorder and recorded her stories, right? She's been dead for almost a decade or so now, and those stories are lost. I can't get them back other than bits and pieces that my sisters and others remember. This is an opportunity to capture some of those stories, whether it's on videotape or audio, not part of the submission, but maybe chronicle those for your own family history, submit the essay for this contest, and really get some national exposure to that story itself. You'll make an outline, you have great characters, all you know great characters, all good stories have great characters, whether it's your favorite TV show or movie, uh, that will drive it. You'll identify great scenes, which we're gonna hear a lot about. You, you're in wonderfully, you know, beautiful scenery around this, this area. You're gonna ask yourself, right, this big question, because this is at the heart of it. If you all are the future of what media is gonna be, of what, who reads what, who watches what, then you have to determine what's most interesting to you. 
So how you tell these stories, what stories you tell, can potentially reflect those subjects and that approach that you're most interested in. Because that's really, at the end of the day, no matter how much I could teach to you about the importance of what we do, you have to come up with those stories that really resonate with your own audience. You're going to write and rewrite and write again. Ernest Hemingway, one of my favorite writers, started out as a journalist. I don't know if you realize that. He covered wars. He wrote fundamental stories before he wrote his wonderful novels. So you, you, journalism is a great start to whatever kind of writing you may want to do. The contest is open to folks 14 to, tw four, uh, to 20 years old. Allows you to come up to Grapevine, Texas, stay at this wonderful hotel that has this wonderful pool that you may get a chance to spend some time in. <clears throat> All right, uh, we, we provide complimentary registration, usually some funds to offset your travel cost. Uh, the winners end up spending a half day workshop. So not only does you, you, know, you come to the conference to meet all these great writers, but you get some personal attention. That means that you'll be spending a half day with, with the journalist this year, George Getchow, who you'll hear from in a second. We'll spend a half day with you going over your essay, giving you tips and advice on your writing that not only will help you improve this piece, but I can guarantee you from my own experience of working with writers and editors and professors over the years, it will improve your overall writing at the end of the day. Some of our speakers this year are just unbelievable. We've just scratched the surface. We'll probably have more than two dozen speakers Journalists who, who are, again, the best in the business who come to our conference. And many others who want to be there, but they can't because of work. Deadline, we did extend this deadline. So instead of the second, you've got to the 24th. So you have a little bit more time to work with your advisors or teachers to get these ideas together. Some of the folks who, uh, who work with us, Alan Pepper was, uh, he was uh, our presenter last year. George Getchow with Marty Barron. <clears throat> Marty Barron's executive editor of the Washington Post. He's won in his career close to 14 Pulitzer Prizes, one of which uh, was at the Boston Globe uh, for a series he did uh, that was part of the Spotlight team. If you recall last year, what was the best movie of the year? Spotlight. Spotlight was based on the, the series of stories the Boston Globe had done about uh, the sexual abuse of priests in the Catholic diocese. Marty Brown was, he spent literally an hour or so more with us talking about his work as a journalist. Gilbert King's fascinating work chronicled the life of Thurgood Marshall as a young attorney. Gilbert King was a commercial photographer who loved to write on the side. He wrote this book and really was about to return to commercial photography when he got the call that he'd won the Pulitzer Prize. This could be you, the Shiva and Alexis. I'm hoping that this can be you as part of these wonderful folks over the last eight years that have participated in this con contest. I'll stop there. You guys have any questions? Rough day, huh? <laughs> Wake up. All right, very good. Please consider this as an opportunity. Whether you like to write or not, think about learning how to write one of these essays because guess what? Yeah, if, you, you're gonna, if you haven't applied to college yet, you're going to be writing a lot more essays. This is national exposure with some of the best journalists in the country. I really wish you the best of luck. Thank you for being here. I hope you learn a great deal over the next uh, hour or two. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you.